In this video, we're going to take a look at uh, a, a particular strategy for finding the shortest distance from a point to a line. And in this video, we're going to use only analytic geometry. Um, those kinds of tools are things like slopes and equations of lines and distance form and that kind of thing. I also have a video on my YouTube channel which involves some analytic geometry and using some trigonometry if you know some right angle trigonometry. They both involve solving exactly the same problem so if you want to watch both you can compare and contrast the two methods. So what we're trying to do is find the shortest distance from this 3 negative 5 point to the line. And the shortest distance is the perpendicular distance and if on your device that doesn't look like, does not look like a right angle it is supposed to be uh, depending on the resolution of your screen it might not look like a right angle or it might. Um, this line y equals negative a half x plus one has a slope of negative a half and if you look carefully at this line segment it goes over one and up two so it has a slope of two. A slope of two and a slope of negative a half are exactly perpendicular so it is supposed to be a right angle here. So in this method the the first thing to do would involve find the slope of the shortest distance line segment. That's actually just what I was talking about. Because of the fact that this line y equals negative a half x plus b, the slope of it would be negative a half, that negative a half right there. Then the shortest distance line segment, the orange one here, the dotted one, its slope would be the negative reciprocal of negative a half. So you flip that upside down and you change the sign. And so you get 2 over 1 or just 2. Now the next thing to do is to find the equation of this line because basically what we're going to do is we're going to find the where this line and the dotted line intersect and then use the distance formula to find the distance from here to here. That's the, that's the main idea using analytic geometry. Now using y equals mx plus b to find the equation of this line, uh, we just found in number 1 here that 2 was the slope, so we can put 2 in place of m. So it's y equals 2x plus b, and in order to find b, we need a point that's on this line. Well, the line goes through 3, negative 5, so we can substitute 3 in for x and negative 5 for y. And so y is negative 5, x is 3, 2 times 3 is 6. And so if we subtract 6 from both sides, or some people say take the 6 over and subtract it from negative 5, we get b to be negative 11. So the equation of that line would be y equals 2x minus 11. And if you think of continuing the line down here, it's not hard to imagine that the y-intercept would be at negative 11. So we'll put the, that equation beside the line. So the next thing to do is to find this intersection point. Where does this line and this line intersect? So we're finding the intersection, this is really just a system of equations of these two, and since they're both solved for y, substitution is often the most convenient way to do this. So I'm going to substitute the 2x minus 11 in place of y here, and so we're basically equating the two of these. Now the only reason there's a bit of a space here is because I have a fraction in this equation. And so in order to get rid of the fraction, and the denominator is 2, I'm going to multiply everything by 2, all the terms. And so, 2 times 2x is 4x, and 2 times negative 11 is negative 22. Nothing divides it over here, we just multiply. The only place anything divides out is right here. This 2 and this 2 divide out. And so, once they divide out, those 2's divide out, you're just left with negative 1 times x, which is negative x. And then 1 times 2 is 2 in the end. Now we want, we're trying to isolate for x. This will give us the x-coordinate of that point of intersection. And so if we bring the negative x over or add x to both sides, we would get 5x on the left and add 22 to both sides. So 2 plus 22 is 24. And if we then divide out the 5, 24 divided by 5 gives you 4.8. So the x-coordinate of this point is 4.8. And that's not hard to imagine that because it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, and that would be 5. So the x-coordinate is a little bit below 5. Now what's the y coordinate? Well, we can take that 4.8 and either substitute in here or in here. I'm going to use the orange one here. So 2 times 4.8 is 9.6 and we subtract 11 from that and the y coordinate is negative 1.4. So this point right here is the point 4.8 comma negative 1.4. So now what we need to do is just use the distance formula to find the distance between these. And so that's the last step. Find the distance between those two points. And so here's the distance formula. And so in the, the x2 minus x1 substitution, we would go 4.8 minus 3. If you want to go 3 minus 4.8, that's OK. Just make sure you do the other, the y's in the same order. And so I would have negative 1.4 uh, minus negative 5, which is the same as plus 5. And so 4.8 minus 3 
is 1.8 and negative 1.4 plus 5 is 3.6 so they're both squared so we square those and add them and so underneath the root we would get 16.2 and so we take the square root of 16.2 and we get a number just over 4 if you want to see what the calculation looks like, this is what my calculator looked like when I substituted this in, or typed this in, sorry, and of course you get exactly the same thing. So that is the shortest distance between these two points, between this point and this line, just over four. And that's the end of the video.